G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel with some more 2023 draft reviewing content. This time I've uh, had a little bit of a deep dive into the draft and how it went down and picked out some of the bigger bargain buys, or at least in my opinion, from the 2023 draft uh, where clubs got what I think is pretty good value for their selection. Uh, whether it be a slider that they took late or in some cases I've just picked out players that I personally, in my opinion, uh, are going to be really good players and um, in that way they are a late gem I suppose. So I suppose I've kind of divided this video into both draft bargains versus you know prior expectations of where a player was meant to go and some late gems that are some favorites of mine. So I've gone through and picked out a handful of players uh, that fit both of these descriptions and we'll go through them one by one. Before I get into it though, uh, this has been a wonderful little period of growth for the channel. Uh, one of the biggest two to three day periods this channel has ever seen in terms of um, analytics and stuff like that. So thank you so much. Uh, I do have a new subscriber goal though. I decided it would be a great idea to start a new year next year with 25,000 subscribers. So if there's anyone watching the content uh, or has just discovered me and is looking for AFL content, if you wouldn't mind terribly, consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. Let's get into it. All right, so on the topic of bargain buys, I'm gonna go through some players that went a little bit later than we expected. And uh, first of all, I wanna highlight maybe Luan Lawal. I'm probably gonna go through it somewhat chronologically in the order they were taken. So Luan Lawal uh, was a next generation academy player for the Western Bulldogs who uh, the Bulldogs could match a bid for if it came after 40. Essendon got in right in time and bid on him at pick 39. And uh, of course the Bulldogs couldn't match, so he joined the Dons. And this one I think is a bargain buy because particularly closer to the draft, Luol was considered someone who could go in the first round. Now bear in mind, first round usually means the first 18 picks. This year, it just meant day one, which lasted until pick 29. So he didn't slide very far, but I think he will prove to be a bargain buy. He's a very modern sort of rebounding defender. He's only 182 centimeters um, and he's quite lightly built, but he's aggressive and he's really good as a rebounder. Essendon were obviously looking to add a little bit of leg speed in the back half, as proven by the uh, the selection of someone else that I'll mention in this video. Uh, but I think they've ticked that box well and truly with the Luan and Luol. So the second player, or the next player, that I think was an absolute bargain buy, and this one I was talking about quite a lot in the live stream, is that of Ollie Murphy, who went pick 41 to the Fremantle Football Club. He's a 200 centimetre key defender, and uh, over time has just been consistently good as a one-on-one -on -one defender and quite a good intercept marker with his contested marking. Now, it wasn't so long ago that Ollie Murphy was considered a top 15 prospect, probably around the middle of the year, and things can change over time. But even going into the draft, him sliding to pick 41 was ge a genuine surprise when you consider he was an All-Australian defender in the under-18s championships and Vic Metro's MVP as well. So with those attributes, I'm surprised he went as late as 41. There was some suggestion, you know, he didn't test very well and uh, potentially his lack of speed as a key defender might be what saw him slide a little bit. But either way, value for money, I think that's a bargain buy for Fremantle. And I'm going to skip the order a little bit here and keep talking about Fremantle because their other selection at pick 60 was someone that I do consider a bargain buy as well in Jack DeLean, the 181 centimeter small forward out of South Australia. Now for context, he went at pick 60, probably considered a top 35 talent had he gone late 30s, not a surprise. Pick 60 is a genuine bargain. And uh, again, another player who's um, potentially his his athletic attributes, well, his, his uh, leap is really good, but I think his endurance and his, his defensive pressure as well are considered shortcomings to some extent. So maybe that's why he slid. But you look at the goal kicking resume that Jack Delane has. He kicked 35 goals from 13 games in the under 16s, which I know is a long time ago. But in the under 18s competition in South Australia this year, he averaged three goals a game, which is elite for a small forward. And he had two bags of four for South Australia in the champs this year as well. So we're just looking at a guy who kicks goals. And particularly with what Fremantle need as well, I think forward line potency in particular, not just forward half players, but guys who can genuinely threaten the goals, uh, I think that's a massive win for them. So who knows what he will amount to become, but I think this was a, uh, a bit of a bargain buy for Fremantle. The next one, I'll highlight a player again that I was somewhat big on in Zane Zakostelsky, who slid all the way to pick 51 at the Brisbane Lions. Now, Zane is a 196 centimeter key defensive prospect, although he has played a fair bit in the ruck in particular towards the back end of the season for the Claremont Colts side. Now, he's probably predicted at some points to go top 25, maybe top 35 was probably closer to the pre-draft feeling. Uh, but to go at 51 and get through uh, two of Fremantle's picks and I think all four of West Coast picks came as a bit of a surprise to me, particularly when both clubs were reportedly interested in Zach Ostelsky. So 
As far as I'm concerned, he had all the makings to, to be an actual bolter in this year's draft in that he had a really strong final series, was best on ground for Claremont in the under-18s a grand final, and he also tested really well at the combine. And when you consider he hasn't had his 18th birthday yet, there's a lot of upside there. So I think the Brisbane Lions, who were on the lookout for talls, did well with this selection. Then we have probably what I would say as the biggest draft slider in this year's draft in Archie Roberts, who made it all the way to Essendon at pick 57. He's an aggressive 184 centimeter running half back. You can probably, you can foresee him pushing up to a wing at the AFL level as well. But again, he, he's a player with a strong resume, played regular rep footy. He was all Australian for Vic Metro this year as well as having back-to-back -back flags for Sandringham Dragons in the Coates Talent League as well. And he's also had one for Halibri College too. So as, he's as decorated as you could probably be for an under-18s prospect. And it's probably not super clear why he slid. In certain corners, I've seen perhaps the drawback that he can be a little bit loose with his disposal. He's a bit aggressive. Um, but I am a little surprised that that saw him slide all the way to pick 57 as well. So he's athletically gifted. And uh, I suppose in a year where it was competitive for running defenders, there were a lot of them taken. Archie Roberts was just not favored, but I think this is a bargain buy for Essendon by default. Then George Stevens was another player who slid all the way to pick 58 and joined the Geelong Football Club quite late. So I've talked about heaps pre-draft, how I couldn't believe he was 101 kilos as a uh, player that's not even six foot three, but he's a big bodied inside mid. And again, another player with the resume that he's had, he had uh, all Australian academy selection and he also captained that team so he's got leadership qualities as well again for context this guy was probably not going to be a surprise if he went in the top 30 i was thinking mid to late 30s probably made sense maybe top 40 at a push but in the end he goes at pick 58 and uh this is you know certainly below where people thought he was going to go He's, uh, he's kind of an accumulating midfielder on the inside, as well as he's shown in some versatility to play forward and back. So he's a solid prospect, and I think on value, this is really good for Geelong. It also helps that he's ready-made and physically able to play AFL from day dot. So I don't know athletically how he's going to go. Uh, probably needs to build that tank and probably drop a few kilos, but there's some potential there for sure. Then the other big story to slider in this year's draft was Ari Shonmaker, who we thought was going to go undrafted at one point. We weren't sure if clubs were going to still take picks that deep, but at pick 62, St Kilda took their fifth selection and pounced on Shonmaker, the 194 centimeter, slightly undersized key defender out of Tasmania. Some say he probably plays more like a oversized flanker than an actual key defender, and perhaps that was the knock on him. But much has been said of that lethal boot. He can kick the ball about 65 meters and can be a real offensive weapon for St Kilda's defense going forward as well. Athletically, maybe a little bit slow for a key forward. They do need to be quick to be able to uh, keep up with forwards on the lead. Um, and there was also a little bit of off-field controversy, if you want to call it that, uh, where he got like a 10-week suspension for buying his teammates alcohol or something that is serious in the context of what it is, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make him a bad person. So I'm glad he got his opportunity and uh, obviously has some really good, even elite AFL traits that could see him become a good player at the next level. Cool, so those are the players that I would consider bargain buyers, certainly based on pre-draft rankings, uh, but I'll highlight a couple of other gems that I think could potentially be good and belie where they're actually taken in the draft. So I've just got three, and of course, this is gonna be subject to a little bit of bias. I haven't necessarily watched all the prospects equally, but just some of mine from my own personal opinion. The first one, uh, again, Fremantle rounding out a good value draft. I'm not saying they're all gonna be guns, but they were good picks on value. But I wanna highlight Cooper Simpson as a player that I think has a lot of upside. And he's only 181 centimeters and 79 kilos as a midfielder, so he's on the smaller side. But his resume is pretty strong too. He was the Dandenong Stingrays best and fairest in his bottom age year and uh, was named co-captain going into 2023 and then missed a fair bit of footy due to uh, injury. But when you consider his attributes, he has a real point of difference against a lot of the other prospects in this year's draft with his uh, explosive pace out of stoppages as well, which is a little bit reminiscent of Shuey, and that's probably why I noticed him so much. But I think he's got real weapons. I think Fremantle's midfield lacks a little bit of leg speed, or, or at least, you know, Liam Henry's left, and that's something that he could add to that mix already. Is he a bargain? Probably not, because Fremantle had to trade a future third to get up to this pick, but I'll, I'll highlight it as a late gem rather than a bargain. By that same token, I will throw one from my own club into the mix here with Clay Hall, who went pick 38 to the West Coast Eagles. 
Again, by the same logic, doesn't qualify as a bargain because the Eagles traded a future third to get up to this pick. So, uh, Richmond accumulating future thirds in this particular draft. But 189 centimetre, really balanced inside mid, um, who can obviously play on the outside too. He's a good two-way runner. I've talked about him before on my channel. He has his own separate video. Um, but the fact as well that he was uh, the only uh, under-18s midfielder who won All-Australian through that midfield in particular. He was the only non-allies player. So I think when you consider that, his production at that level, which is a, a pretty high standard, and also a really solid year playing Waffle Seniors this year, I think he will prove to be a good value selection at pick 38. I'm not saying he's a future brand low medalist, but I think he will uh, probably be one that clubs will look at and go, how did he go so late? And another one that I'll highlight as one of my sneaky little favorites is probably Toe Giath from the Collingwood Football Club. He went to pick 37. Uh, he is the younger brother of Chan Kuth at Hawthorne for anyone who hadn't made that connection. I'm sure you had. Uh, but he was a, also a next generation academy talent for the Hawks and they missed out on him by Collingwood taking him at pick 37. But he's a 188 centimeter sort of intercepting rebounding defender. He's really athletic, really quick, and he's a good interceptor too. But on top of that, he's also a very composed player. And to me, I just think he will slot in at AFL level relatively well. Maybe needs to put a bit of meat on the bones, so to speak. But at the moment, the way I'm looking at it, I think 37 is a bit of a bargain. Technically wouldn't count it as a bargain because he's only a little bit slightly behind what we expected him to go to. We only expected him to go maybe late first round at best. So it's not a massive slide, but I guess it doesn't really matter how I, uh, I label these players. I just think Giath will prove to be a good player and he's one of my faves. Anyway, guys, that is my take on the players that uh, slid and became good bargain selections for their respective clubs, sprinkled in with a couple of my own favorites who I think are gonna do well from later in the draft. So as always, I value your input and I really appreciate the support on the channel lately. So let me know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.